This is Miss Williams, a fourth grade teacher. This is Miss Williams' math class, a typical group of curious and aspiring individuals. Miss Williams is using Time to Know's unique digital teaching platform, which empowers her with new ways to reach and teach her students. Miss Williams enters her main screen and selects the relevant lesson from the Time to Know recommended curriculum, which covers the entire year. Today's lesson is about comparing fractions. As the lesson begins, the entire class views a short, motivating clip that presents an authentic math problem. Get ready to see who will be the school champion of the 200-yard race. The competitors, Lou, Ben, John, and Dan. On your marks, get set, go. The competition is not over yet. Dan is in the lead. Lou ran four-fifths of the course. Ben ran two-thirds of the course. John ran six-sevenths of the course. Miss Williams asks, if Dan is in the lead, who is in second place? A lively class discussion immediately ensues. Next, Miss Williams directs her students to discover the answer on their own. She activates the first learning activity, called the race, and they begin to work individually. Some students have put on earphones to get additional help. Let's see how Tony is doing. He is asked to indicate what part of the whole racetrack each runner has run, using a familiar fraction applet. The interactive applet helps Tony reconstruct the real-life problem presented in the clip in mathematical terms. He can see that Lou ran four-fifths of the race, so he commands the mathematical applet to divide the strip into five bars and highlights four of them. For Ben, he generates three bars and highlights two. He does the same for John and ranks the runners according to their position in the results table. Now he is asked to suggest a fraction representing how far Dan ran. Using the applet, he can visually explore various answers to the problem. Knowing that Dan is in the lead, Tony adds a new strip representing Dan's position on the track and decides to divide it into eight bars. He then highlights seven of them. He can see that his suggested answer places Dan ahead of all the others. Satisfied with his result, Tony moves on to the next stage and writes the corresponding fraction in the results table. Finally, he sends his answer to Miss Williams. In the gallery, Tony's answer is added to the answers the other students have submitted. Now that all of the students have completed their task, Miss Williams uses the Eyes on the Teacher function to focus their attention on the main board. Using the gallery feature, Miss Williams displays two correct answers and asks, why are these two answers correct? To help her students, she displays the fraction bars representing second, third, and fourth places and adds Tony's and Jane's suggestions for first place. Miss Williams asks, can you explain why seven-eighths and eleven-twelfths are greater than six-sevenths? The class is still struggling for an answer. To help them, Miss Williams sorts the fractions according to size. I know, because seven-eighths and eleven-twelfths are missing a smaller part than six-sevenths. The class has just discovered the complete to whole rule. Miss Williams displays a PowerPoint slide that she has prepared that formally summarizes this new mathematical rule. When comparing two fractions, the greater fraction will always be the fraction that has the smallest leftover part. Now it's time to practice the new rule. Miss Williams has divided the class into two groups based on their progress. Students in the red group can individually practice the rule in a game called the Fraction War. For the advanced blue group, Miss Williams has provided a link to the Mathematics Encyclopedia where they're introduced to the Rhind Papyrus Scroll in order to explore Egyptian fractions. The advanced students are moving along rapidly while the students in the red group are taking their time. Each student is free to advance at his or her own pace, according to his or her personal learning style. Meanwhile, the power of differential learning is also being implemented in Ms. Johnson's English language arts class. They are about to start exploring a text passage. Ms. Johnson has created three reading groups in her class, pre-level, on-level, and above-level. 
Gabriella has just moved to the above level group from the on level group, while Ben is still in the pre level group. They're both presented with differentiated text passages. While the content of each passage is identical, the text that Ben reads is simpler in terms of lexical complexity. Now, the class reads a narrative text. In the past, Ben struggled with reading and couldn't concentrate. The text reader assists him. He hears the narration with headphones while simultaneously viewing the highlighted paragraphs. Quan heard many voices coming from outside the family hut. It was late, and such conversations were unusual at this hour. An embedded dictionary provides additional support. Back in Miss Williams' math class, the students are working on their next practice activity. A worksheet of fraction exercises implementing the complete to whole rule. While working, the students get instantaneous feedback on each question they answer. While the class is working, Miss Williams can monitor the progress and performance of each of her students in real time. This allows her to instantly identify students who are having difficulties and offer an immediate response. An alert on her screen indicates that Tony is still struggling with his worksheet, so she decides to approach him and offer her personal assistance. The lesson is about to end, so Miss Williams assigns her class their homework, which they can complete online. After class, she chooses to log in to review the lesson she had just completed teaching. Based on her class performance that day, she decides to add more practice activities for tomorrow. So she searches the content library for an appropriate game that covers the same state standards and assigns the game to the group of weaker students. She is now ready for tomorrow's class.